course, if I am sitting at the DAO terminal and somebody sits beside me and I don't know who they are, uh, most likely I'm going to turn around and say, who are you? And he might say, oh, I'm a new system admin, I'm Bob, I just joined the company, nice to meet you. So security was fairly easy to control in that case. Then we got into 1990s and this thing called the internet came on board. The personal computer started having enough power at that time. Uh, 3D6, 4D6, Pentium 1 uh, was coming out around that time frame. And all of a sudden the personal computer could be used as a server and we had to get decentralized. It was one server for FTP, one server for web service, one server for SMTP. And if you would put like two servers on the same server, it was like, ah, don't uh, aggregate service. One box for each service. And today we went around from being totally decentralized, we're getting centralized again. Especially on the data side, we've seen this, that people found out very quickly, great, we're all decentralized, but now I have to manage an FTP server who has a specific configuration software. I have to manage my web server who has another management tool. I have to manage whatever service with another management tool. And you see this today, and most companies out there have something called UTM, Unified Threat Management, which is a single box that will give you web server, uh, firewall, virus scrubbing, content scrubbing, and all of those services on one single box. And the reason they do this is to reduce complexity where you have one single management interface all integrated for all of those services that you provide. So decentralizing anything was a great idea, but complexity got involved in this case. And the more complex your architecture is, the more likelihood you could have that somebody will find a vulnerability that they can exploit as well. So this is how things have changed over time. And just another slide showing a bit the same thing where we went from the mainframe to the PC to client server. Then the internet came into play. And the internet changed a lot of things. All of a sudden, we used to have service that was running on the desktop. And this service, all of a sudden, is running facing the public internet. So you have like 12 million users on the internet trying to break into your service, trying to exploit your environment. So that changed quite a bit. And what happened as well is those client-server application, all of a sudden, we talked to our programmer, and we told the programmer, turn this into a .NET application. Turn this into an ASP application. Turn this into a PHP application. And you have developers that are very, very good at coding, <coughs> but not so good at security. And they learn a new web-based language that they start from scratch. They don't know much about the language yet. And they take those compile applications and they turn them into web applications. So lots of fun over here. Uh, layer 7, application level. This is where people today will focus their attack, finding vulnerabilities within software that you can access on the web. E-mobility, we see this with uh, all kind of mo mobile devices. Small PDAs, Blackberries, and it's like every single minute of our life where we have like communication. Uh, you see this, people online, they're doing emails. Uh, you see this at the cinema, you see this at the restaurant, everywhere. Uh, <laughs> and I laugh on my way here because I stop by the washroom and there's this guy who's at the washroom, at the men's washroom, and he's like one hand on the Blackberry and one hand busy doing something else. So it's like, hey, you, you, you can take five minutes to do your things and then uh, take care of your Blackberry. So that's how embedded things are. Uh, even within kitchen nowadays, uh, you have like those fridge that have like TV embedded, and they are like they have like barcode reader. So if you use like a can of beans or a soup, anything, you would scan the can, and it will order a new can from the store. And two days later, the store will show up with a box and say, "Hey, here's a can to replace uh, the noodle soup that you use." So uh, that's how embedded it could be. Uh, we're connected like 25 hours a day, and that's what we don't realize, that we really, whenever the computer goes down, we run out of power, you're like helpless. It's like, a uh, quick example could be something as simple as the mail server goes down within the company, and employees are coming in, first thing you do in the morning, get mail, 
It's like, oh no, the mail server is done. It, it's like a crisis, you know? We don't talk to each other anymore. Uh, you have your friend uh, against the hall. You send them an email to say, hey, are you coming for lunch? Don't talk to him, it's forbidden. You have to, to communicate through an electronic means. So oftentimes we have clients that how we have is an email for them. We don't have the good old cell phone number to get in touch with them and say, hey, sorry, my mail server is down and I cannot do whatever I was supposed to do on that day. So it's really embedded within your life. Uh, even like things as simple as traveling, uh, whenever I, like, Hey, I have a class coming up in Dubai, I go to Expedia.com, I need a flight, I need an hotel, I need uh, to rent a car, whatever. I do all this online within 15 minutes. In the past, I would jump in my car, go to my travel, travel agent, and tell her, oh, I'm going to Dubai from this day to this day, can you find something for me? And sometimes she would find something for me, but maybe not the timing I wanted, maybe not the exact type of hotel I wanted, and so on. So. This is embedded in our life. We wish to look up a phone number, we go online and we look up the phone number. So we don't realize it, but it's part of our daily life today, and it's very, very embedded in everything we do. Need for balance approach. This slide refers mostly to people, technology, and process. You could have the best people in the world, people trained, all certified, uh, they have lots of experience, they have lots of good technical management background. However, if you don't have the proper technology, uh, even if you have the best people in the world and you're still using a basic packet filtering firewall, a small router that you have and that's all you do, and you say, oh, a router is good enough, uh, you might not get the benefit because very basic filtering mechanism will not filter content, will not filter virus with an email. So you would need proper technology as well. And you could have, in some case, people that are very good people, they have very good technology, best of breed, the best firewall, the best antivirus, the best whatever, but they don't have process in place. Uh, if you have a protection mechanism and you don't maintain it, most likely within a few weeks, you don't get any benefit from it. It would be like having an antivirus software on my computer and I never update the signature. Of course, two weeks from now, I'm gonna get infected if I don't update the signature on my antivirus software. So you've got to have a process in place where this is done over and over again. And I tell people all the time, security is not a target, it's a process. So you don't say, I'm going to get sicker, and that's it. You have to continuously monitor and improve over time because there's new threat coming out every single day, every single week. And that's what people don't understand sometimes. Uh, I do a bit of penetration testing, security assessment as well. Uh, not as much uh, anymore, but I used to do lots of pen tests. And I would have clients that I would do a test on their infrastructure. Yeah, I would give them a report of everything that was wrong, what can be fixed, what was missing. And they would go on a rampage. For three weeks a month, they would work around the clock, 24 hours a day, weekend, fix everything. And then they had pretty good security in place. But for 11 months, they would do nothing. So it would be like once a year at first. And a year later, you go back and, hey, come on, can you test again? And you do your test, and you have the exact same issue that you had a year before. Uh, you could just change the date on the report, and they still have the same issues. It's like if you don't change your process, uh, you don't 